Uh, hi, John. No, I think uh, the, the demand problem is going to be behind us by the time we get into May, June. Uh, it'll be behind us. Uh, the OPEC cut kicks in uh, at the beginning of May. So we haven't felt it yet, but we will. And uh, they're going to be watching the market very carefully. They, uh, they're going to meet again every two months. So they'll be meeting again in June. Uh, if, if necessary, they will take additional action. Uh, the OPEC uh, forecast itself showed that this quarter was going to be weak, and I think that was the, the logic behind the cut. But uh, the same forecast, same OPEC forecast, plus the IEA, plus the EIA, all of them show a much stronger second uh, half of the year. So demand will fix itself in the second half. Supply will then have to react, and that's a really a great opportunity, uh, not just for OPEC, but for the whole oil industry. Uh, as you as you can imagine, mm. the Europeans don't have any, so uh, it's going to be a opportunity. So, which raises the question: the OPEC cuts. How much of this was politics versus economics? If we're going to see a difference in the supply demand equation later this year. I mean, if OPEC's cutting now, how quickly can they re-ramp production later on? Well, Morgan, I think I was very impressed with the fact of how uh, efficiently and how well coordinated that, that cut happened. It came by surprise to a lot of us. Uh, it included uh, virtually all the uh, OPEC players and OPEC plus players who had additional capacity, and they were able to implement it very quickly, very agile uh, decision. So if they see a need to go the other way, I think they'll be equally agile, equally quick. Uh, it wasn't politics, because as I say from lately, when I've been reading the OPEC reports, they were concerned about the second quarter being a bit weaker than some of the other organizations had been forecasting. So, Sadat, I'm just, when I look at what the markets are doing, when I look at what the VIX is doing, when I look at what oil is doing. I just wonder, is there too much complacency? What's your downside scenario? What would cause um, the, the price of oil to drop so we can so we can prepare in case that happens? Yeah, uh, John, I think OPEC has been very concerned about complacency specifically. And, and that's why uh, the uh, minister, the Saudi minister, has been talking about being preemptive and proactive uh, he saw this uh, shortage of uh, demand, this fall in demand coming, and he was listening to his advisors, and he decided that this was the right time. They got together very confidentially, incidentally, uh, considered the outlook, and made that decision almost within days. So they're not complacent on their side. The, the complacency, unfortunately, is in the rest of the industry. You've got great opportunities to add capacity right now. The world is short on gas, LNG. Uh, there isn't enough refined products outside of OPEC and, and the Far East. And uh, the, the concern about environmental issues and, and lack of financing has created shortfalls. That's where the complacency is, I believe.